We've previously traversed battlefields and scaled fortresses, but we're still on the hunt for those power stars to save Princess Peach. So approaching a door with a number three on it on the far side of the foyer, we can fish a power star out of our pockets, throw it into the air, and get soaked through with that golden glory. Reacting to the star power, the door slowly opens. Star power? Oh, they must be talking about when Mario appeared in Al Pacino's 1992 classic Scent of a Woman. You're building a rat ship here. A vessel for seagoing snitches. And if you think you're preparing these minnows for manhood, you better think again. Because I say you are killing the very spirit this institution proclaims it instills. What a sham. What kind of a show are you guys putting on here today? We open the door and enter a beautifully ambient lit aquarium. Finally see the decorators have made use of all that dead wall space. Looking around we can see the vast extent of what this room holds. Heading over to the sign on the wall we can take a read. Are you using the cap locks? You really should, you know. To make them solid so you can break them, you have to press the coloured cap switches in the castle's hidden courses. You'll find the hidden courses only after regaining some of the power stars. The cap blocks are a big help. Red for the wing cap, green for the metal cap, and blue for the vanish cap. Well, we'll definitely have to take their advice and find these courses, but that's for another time. Heading over to chat to our toad friend. The names of the stars are also hints for finding them. They are displayed at the beginning of each course. You can collect the stars in any order. You won't find some stars, enemies or items unless you select a specific star. After you collect some stars, you can try another course. We're all waiting for your help. You know what? Screw you, Toad. Screw you. I have been helping out plenty. I have busted my... <sighs> Do you know what? I, I, I'm just going to relax. I'm going to look at these fish. How lovely. And what's in the painting? Oh, it's a wrecked ship. All right, let's... Let's just go and explore that then, yeah? Maybe start helping. Course 3, Jolly Roger Bay. Plunder in the sunken ship. Let's go! We arrive in a vastly different landscape than one we've seen before. Huge, jagged, imposing cliff faces surround us as there's a body of water ahead, fog floating on its surface. We can check out this exclamation box in the corner, just for a handful of coins. And on the edge of the coast, we can read the signpost. Attention! Read before diving in. If you stay under the water for too long, you'll run out of oxygen. Return to the surface for air or find an air bubble or coins to breathe while underwater. Press A to swim. Hold A to swim slow and steady. Tap A with smooth timing to gain speed. Press up on the control stick and press A to dive. Press down on the control stick and press A to return to the surface. Hold A down and press A while on the surface near the edge of the water to jump out. And now we've had a comprehensive lesson in how to swim from a signpost located on the edge of the water, I'm sure nothing can go wrong. So, with both feet first, we jump in. The water is cool and crisp as it soaks through our overalls and weighs down our moustache. We can dive down and see some of the unique flora and fauna that reside on the seafloor. And swimming forward we see a great dip and at the bottom, a wrecked ship. Getting closer to inspect this wreck we see in one of the windows what seems to be the head of a giant eel. This is a moray and it's taken home in the cabin of the ship. I wish we could inspect it more but we are running out of air so swimming back to the surface to refill our lungs with precious oxygen we can dive back down for a second look but oh. Where has Moray gone? Has he slipped back into the cabin? Looking around, <gasps> we see in all its glory. It's huge and imposing and it looks like it's coming for us. So we take shelter within the cabin. Entering, we see a number of treasure chests and platform, but it's all submerged and our lungs are filling with carbon dioxide and we need to get oxygen into our system. So swimming up to the edge of the upturned ship, we get an air bubble and that sweet, crisp oxygen. And now we can swim back down to inspect these treasure chests. Hmm, maybe we can open one underwater. Getting closer and oh, we're electrocuted. I'm guessing that wasn't the right one. We can check out another one and <gasps> hurt us again. That must be a horrible electric shock, especially under all this salty water. Low on health, we top up on oxygen and come back for a second attempt. 
Checking out another treasure chest we haven't yet inspected and oh, we get electrocuted again. Well, probability says that this fourth one will be the correct one. So we open it and out pops an air bubble because that's how breathing works, kids. We can swim round and we open number two, number three, and finally, number four. And as we do, the ship begins to shake. We look up and we can see the water beginning to drain. Oh, thank goodness, no more chance of drowning. And now all these platforms are sticking out. Well, only one thing to do and that's climb our way to the top. But of course, years of being underwater has led to these platforms being slippy with moss and other algae. As we try to jump up, we keep slipping down. But perseverance and some sandpaper on the bottom of his boot, Mario makes his way to the top, where an exclamation box is just waiting to be punched. Upon opening, we find our first power star. Here we go! And now on to number two. Can the eel come out to play? Let's go! So we're back in the bay and it looks like we need to find this moray. So jumping back in the water, we can swim on down to where we found the eel before. But as we're swimming along, we notice there's the ship. It's now floating on the surface of the water. That rumbling before, it must have been the ship auditioning itself as Davy Jones's new ride. Diving under this ghost ship and down to where it used to lie, we can see quite a different landscape ahead of us. We swim through a circle of coins at the entrance of the cave system and pick up a one-up mushroom. And as we head back out, ah, there's the eel. And one thing I want to know is, will he come out to play? We approach him to play and oh, he does oh. not want to play. This is like the time my dog bit me in the face. True story. It's a good job we're in salty water to clean up this inevitable infection from this bite, which I didn't have when my dog bit me. True story. We turn back around and see the eel has come out of his cave, and at the end of his tail is a power star. Looks like we're going to have to risk a mauling again and getting close and personal. Swimming around, trying to catch up with the deftly swimming moray, we eventually hit the power star, which flies back to the entrance of his cave. The moray is heading in the same direction, Oh, now it's a race to the death. If we get there in front of it, will it try to eat us? But luckily, we get the power star and are transported out to the level. Here we go! <laughs> Treasure of the Ocean Cave. Let's go! So now we have to find an ocean cave. The only place to find one of those is in the ocean. So we jump back into the water and swim on down to the crater. We can see the moray out for a little explore, avoiding it the best we can. Let's see if where it sleeps is the cave where the treasure is held. We swim on over, but we can't get in. I know firsthand you do not want to be caught playing around where the animal that bit you sleeps. True story. So we head on to the other cave system where we got that one-up mushroom from the ring of coins. Avoiding the moray, we swim on through and up and we breathe in fresh air. Well, it's difficult to know how fresh it is. It is air in a cave. So perhaps very stale, old, spore-ridden air. We see a signpost. Keep out! That means you! Arr! Anyone entering this cave without permission will meet certain disaster. Pfft, who cares about warnings like that? And my hubris almost gets the better of me as a huge chunk of rock nearly falls on my face. Narrowly avoiding it, we can run past some Goombas until we do get splatted by a huge chunk of rock. Oh, that's the last time I scoff what a signpost says. Gee whiz. Collecting some coins to restore our health, we see in the corner a platform with some more treasure chests. Checking out what the signpost next to it says. Arr, ahoy matey, I have sunken treasure here, I do. But to pluck the plunder, you must open the treasure chests in the right order. What order is that, you say? I'll never tell. Well, Captain, well, thanks, Captain. We're an utter waste of a board and pen. So we can try to open these treasure chests and oh. yep, we get electrocuted. That obviously wasn't the correct one. Hence the one at the back. Oh, that one opened. Trying our luck with the second one. Oh, we're on a roll. Let's see the one on the right. And then we open the fourth and out pops the power star. Bad luck, Captain. Maybe just bury it in the sand next time. Here we go! Red coins on the ship afloat. Let's go! 
Our fourth star tasks us with finding the eight red coins of the level. So heading towards the edge, we can see one floating in the distance. We head on round to as far as the sand will take us to climb a spike sticking out of the water. Reaching the top, we collect our first and decide to show off and oh, it hurt us. Let that be a lesson. Chatting to our bob buddy, we might as well open the cannon for whenever that needs to be used. But now to look for the other red coins. We can jump back into the water and swim down to check out these clams. And as they open up, what a beautiful red coin in the center. I feel like the birth of Venus and Botticelli should paint me right now. But then I get slammed in the clam shell and it hurts. So we swim away onto the next clam. Any coins in there? No, just the remains of a poor Cooper Trooper who wasn't so lucky to escape. Up to the next clam, we find our third red coin. And then swimming up to a ridge, we can find our fourth. Topping up on air, we can swim down to the bottom of the cavern to see if there are any lying on the floor. And this is where we find another clamshell. Waiting for it to open, we can pick up our fifth. Avoiding the moire, we swim as fast as we can back to the surface. And now three more to go. As we look at the newly reclaimed ship, we can see all three floating on top. So now we know where we need to be. Checking out the cannon that our bob on buddy has opened for us, we can jump in, take careful aim at the ship, and with hopes of landing on deck, fire ourselves through the sky. Yahoo! And our aim was much better than we thought. We land straight onto the sixth red coin. The motion of the ocean is causing this box to perilously slide up and down the deck. This needs to be fastened down securely ASAP, otherwise the captain will lose his license. Jumping up to the top of the cabin, we can pick up our seventh, and then our eighth and final red coin. And up pops the power star, which we can grab. But no time to celebrate, as we still have more to get. Here we go! Blast to the stone pillar. Let's go! Okay, so it seems like we need to blast to a stone pillar. So jumping in the water and swimming over to the cannon, we can jump in and see what stone pillars are available to us. There's one there which we've already climbed to get the red coin, but there in front of us are three more. Now, eeny meeny miny mo, let's go for the middle one. Blasting across, we can't take hold, we fall into the water. So, jumping in for a second shot, we'll aim for the one on the left this time, as the middle one only had a one-up mushroom on top. Aiming a little bit higher so we can grab on. Oh, we've taken hold right at the precipice of that point. And as we can see, there's a balcony hidden from view with an exclamation point box on top. I think we know what might be inside this, so making sure we're aimed up to jump off. We jump across, flatten ourselves down, shatter our back, but it doesn't matter. There's the power star. through the jet stream. Let's go. So in order for us to get into a jet stream, we need to get into some water. So heading into the cannon, we can fire ourselves off into the direction of the cavern. Swimming down, we can see that sixth sweet power star resting there. This will be easy, let's just swim into it. But this jet stream is too darn powerful. We can keep at it, but we're running out of oxygen and running out of steam. So swimming back to the surface to top up on oxygen and get our brain working, we can think of different tactics. Heading back to the beginning of the level, we come across a metal cap box. This metal cap will turn Mario into metal, which makes him invincible and invulnerable to attacks, but also a lot heavier underwater. So with our new look at the T-1000, we can jump back into the water and head across the jet stream. We sink to the bottom of the ocean, but not fast enough to hit the jet stream. So we can try this again. Donning the metal cap, we can jump into the cannon and fire ourselves across the sky like a steel ballistic and gently fall down to the jet stream. But still, we're not quick enough. There just doesn't seem to be enough time to reach the jet stream from the beginning of the level. Maybe there's another way we can do this. This area we haven't explored as much. So jumping on this piece of driftwood, we jump onto the next platform and there's another metal cap. Donning this one, we can jump straight into the water. We're already much closer to the jet stream. Will this be enough for us to be able to reach it? Slowly sinking down to the floor, we can run across and just before it runs out, we're in there, we get the star, a little backflip in the water, 
And that's number six. And now to round up 100 coins for that secret seventh. We can immediately turn left and destroy this block for three coins. Jumping back in the water, we can cautiously take the red coins out of the clam's mouth, collect this circle of yellow coins above this rock, and pluck out the red coins from the mouths of the other clams. Grabbing the ring of coins that were available at the cave entrance, we can swim up into the cave and massacre the Goombas. Dodging the falling rocks, we pick up another circle of coins and then come across a blue coin block. Ground pounding it, we can mop up six blue coins, which adds 30 to our total. Heading out of the cave, we can head back to the beginning of the level and hop into the cannon, where we fire ourselves at the spike next to the bob on buddy to pick up another red coin. Back over the driftwood, we pick up a line of coins floating in the air. Next to the metal cap box, we hit an exclamation point switch. This activates blocks which join the floating platforms. Since we are timed, we can run across, picking up the coins as we go. With only 12 left, we know where we can get 6 by jumping onto the ship. We pick up another red coin, triple jump our way to the top of the deck to pick up two more. Now, 6 more coins to grab. Where could they be? Heading back into the water, we can swim around the base of the giant spikes sticking out of the water, and there with our 100th coin is the power star. Now that we've collected all seven power stars, it's time to ask, what is the story of Jolly Roger Bay? It's a story of struggle, of perseverance, of never being complacent. You can have your life, you can have your home, but at any moment, something can come along and completely turn it upside down. Never settle. For what you may think is stability is actually a solid foundation for change. But change isn't necessarily a bad thing. It opens new doors, new possibilities to life, different experiences, new beginnings. But through all of this, just remember to never stop striving. For the tide will come and go. We can either try to hold it back, or we can go with the flow. And that is the full story of Jolly Roger Bay. What do you think of this? Should we have left the moray to stay in its new home of the abandoned ship? Should we have plundered the captain's treasure? Do you think that being covered in metal is any good for your skin? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe as there'll be a ton of new content being released on this channel in time. But for now, my friends, luck and more to you all and catch you next time.